Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Oliver King and this channel is all about how to make money from your art. And for me, this includes things like photography, videography, and graphic design. Today, I'm just giving a simple update on the earnings that I've made on platforms like Shutterstock and Adobe Stock. I do this fairly regularly, so it'll just give you kind of a few ideas on what you can make on these platforms if this idea is interests you. And then I'm also just gonna talk about some of the other projects that I'm also working on closer to the end of the video. And then I'm also gonna just talk about some things that are selling well for me lately. And hopefully this will give you you some ideas for images that you could include in your own portfolio so that you could make more sales and maybe just get some inspiration and ideas from what I'm personally working on. So let's start with Shutterstock and to this point I've earned $216.29 from Shutterstock and this is going to be in US dollars just for reference sake and uh, so I've made a fair amount of money off of this platform so far and I'm really happy with uh, the time investment to return so far. Obviously stock photography is one of those long-term games where you just keep uploading things as you have the time to do it and you do this while you're also working on other photography projects and getting clients and doing regular mainstream photography sort of projects. So I always say stock photography is supplemental. It's not usually your mainstream of income. So if you're a photographer or if you're somebody who's creating videos and images, you know, you're not going to be rich overnight with it, but it is a good way to just kind of earn a residual income as you're kind of honing your craft. I've sold 286 items and I think about five or six of them have been videos. Um, probably a couple hundred images and then about 50 vectors. I would say so far the vectors have sold the best out of the small number of vectors that I do have. They sell quite frequently, so they're worth the time that I put into them. And also on Adobe Stock, they sell much more than the images that I have uploaded on Adobe Stock. So I think there's kind of a lean towards vectors on Adobe Stock. And so I guess I'll just talk about Adobe Stock next in which I've earned uh, $28.39 so far from it. I have fewer images and fewer videos up on Adobe Stock just because I have uh, time constraints right now and so I haven't uploaded everything that I've uploaded to Shutterstock onto Adobe Stock. But uh, I would say Adobe Stock's definitely been worth the time and effort that I put into it. I finally sold a video on there and that was just a simple old-fashioned film overlay sort of a thing and I did a tutorial about that a couple uh, probably a month ago at this point. So obviously these platforms, you're not earning tons and tons of money, but you are earning money as a beginning photographer, which is what I am at the end of the day. And so I'm just really happy and really grateful that I've been able to make these sales so far. And I've also had some sales from referrals as well. So thank you to anybody who's used my referral code on Shutterstock. That's helped me out a little bit so far. I think I've earned $10 off of referrals. So thank you guys very much. I'm very happy about that. So the effort and the time that I put into this, it obviously takes a while to start paying off. But more recently, I actually see the results um, starting to actually amount to something. So I've overall earned about $300 US across different platforms, including Shutterstock, Blackbox, Big Stock, Adobe Stock. And so between all of those platforms, $300 is, you know, a fairly decent sum of money, all things considered. And so I always ask myself the question when I'm doing stock photography, is this really worth it? And I guess the answer to that question is that it's a long-term goal. It's, a, it's something that supplements your income as a photographer. And it always allows you to continue to sell photos and videos, even if you don't currently have a client. Obviously for times like right now, it's harder to get clients or you have to do them in certain constrained situations. So maybe you do more one-on-one -on -one work right now, or I don't know how people are adapting to that, but uh, I find myself more or less relying on doing stuff at home and trying to make graphics or make videos or photos that I can sell from my home. And this ensures that even though I'm not making tons of money as a photographer, I'm still honing a craft. I still have something to work towards. I still have a goal in mind when I'm uploading things. And so I'm creating images that are both marketable and they also have, I guess, a concept to them. So it elevates my photography game and that's why I continue to do it, but it is also honing a marketable skill. So I would say that the results that I've generated so far, I've been fairly happy with. Now, some of the things that have been selling for me recently that have been somewhat unique or a little bit different, I guess, would be white backgrounds, digital backgrounds, and uh, what was the other one? Oh yeah, vector icon sets of specific types. So these are the things that have been selling for me that are a bit more unique that you might want to think about focusing on. So if you have Photoshop, you can create little digital effects backgrounds with glow effects on them. And if you create 
Photoshop um, projects or little JPEGs with a black background and digital glowing elements, I guess, in the foreground. Uh, you can sell these and people will be able to use them and overlay them onto their photos by using different screen modes. So they're an excellent way for you to kind of sell something that's a little bit unique, a little bit different, that people can find a lot of utility in. It saves them time and at the end of the day, people usually download stuff from Shutterstock to save them time or to just have quick access to um, a whole bunch of different graphics. So it's a good way to make something that's slightly unique and it's also a good way to kind of invest your time in because the one I've created, the only one I've created I think, it has sold three times in the last month so I guess it's somewhat of a popular thing right now. White backgrounds are something that always sells really well especially for things like spa sort of concepts so the one I took in particular had white curtains in the background, it's actually these curtains here and then just a little plant in the foreground and so this kind of suggests the idea of a spa, and so I think that's probably why it's sold. And then also just vector icon sets. These continue to always sell well for me. They take some time to put together, but they will sell more than once over the lifetime of having them up. So uh, I would say if you're going to invest your time into doing vector stuff, then I think vector icon sets are never a bad idea to kind of focus on. And the reason I would say that is that if you're going to create little vectors, instead of focusing on a really complex kind of textured pattern or something like that. What you might want to focus on is just maybe creating 10, 12, or 15 little icons and then putting them on a page together. Have them all about the same style and the same size and uh, it's just a good way to do something simple that will actually make you income fairly soon. And, and again, if you're a beginning graphic designer like me, uh, it's going to just be an easy entry level way to start earning money in that particular direction. So that's basically the earnings and some of the unique sales that I've been making lately. Again, I think stock photography is really interesting to think about as being something that's iterative across time. And I guess what I mean by that is that the lifetime value of the elements that I've put up so far hasn't come back to me fully yet. They might be up there for another 20 years or however long this industry lasts in particular. So they do have a higher lifetime val value than what I've received so far. So that's always something to keep in mind if you're ever kind of discouraged about the fact that you only have $10 or even 25 cents in your pocket. These things, they grow if you invest your time into them. And across time, they're gonna pay you back more and more if you just keep growing your portfolio. So I'm gonna to continue to focus on this. I think it's a great way to expand my income, but I'm also working hard to supplement um, and create more income streams with other projects. That is what I'm working on. Those are the sums of money that I've made recently and I hope it's useful to you. I know some of these videos were probably repetitive at a certain point and I don't know if you're sick of hearing about this, but I'm gonna keep making these because this is the stuff that I'm working on. I am genuinely interested in it and I think it is useful for artists who are just getting their feet um, off the ground. And so, yeah, I'll just hopefully make these and I hope that they're very helpful to you. Thanks for watching this video. Have a great week and we'll see you in the next one.